Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to this workshop. And also, I would like to thank the local organizers for preparing this very nice workshop. Uh, I'm very happy to talk here. And today, uh, today I will talk about um, some algebraic structure called the travel group points and its relationship with combinatorial structure coming from graphs. Uh, this is joint work with Professor John Lecho and John Mee Park at the Busan National University. Okay, now I will start. Okay, uh, in this talk, a graph means a simple graph. So this is a pair of a set of vertices and edges. And if we draw a picture of graphs, then we put point and edges by uh, vertex and edges by point and line. And we consider only simple graphs. So um, graphs have no multiple edges and no loops. But the vertex set may be infinite, finite or infinite. And, and one more terminology, a groupoid is a pair of just a set and a binary operation. So just a pair of set and binary operation. And this is also called a magma. And we draw a groupoid by, by writing an operation table. So put the elements of V and and the entry of the table is defined to be just A star B or something. Okay, now I will, oh sorry. Now I will give the definition of travel groupoid. Uh, this notion was introduced by Nevesky in 2006 in his study, study of some shortest passes in graphs. So here is the definition. A travel groupoid is a groupoid satisfying the following two axioms. The first one is, for any two elements, u and b, u star v star u is equal to u. And the second axiom is, for any two elements, u and b, if u star v star v is equal to u, then U and V are the same. These two axioms is the definition for travel group point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Here is a here is just a group point. So let's check that whether this group point is a travel group point or not. To check, to check, to check, we just we just check the axioms. So there are three times three cases to check for first axioms. And from the operation table, we can check the first axiom are satisfied each nine cases. For example, A star B star A. So A star B is equal to B and star A. So B star A is equal to A. So for A and B, this action satisfies, and we can also check the other cases. And, if, oh, sorry. and if, for the second action, uh, we check for two distinct elements, U and B, we check this in, uh, how to say, not equation. So for, for example, for A and B, A star B star B, is equal to, okay, B star B, which is equal to B. So this is not equal to the element A. So a, for A and B, this equal, uh, how to say, this not non equation holds. And we can also check the for other cases in the similar way. So this is a travel group point. Okay, now I will give more examples for travel group point. A geodetic graph is a connected graph in which there exists a unique shortest path between any two distinct vertices. 
So, for example, trees and odd cycles and block graphs are examples of geodetic graphs. And we denote by A sub G U B is the vertex adjacent to U, which is on the unique shortest path from U to V. So this is the second vertex of the unique shortest path U from U to V. And then we define a groupoid. This is called pro this is called the proper groupoid of a geodetic graph G. So if, if I only think correctly, if you <laughs> Uh, phi adjacent, then this is just phi. Yes, yes, that's right. So, the proper groupoid is the pair of uh, the vertex set of G, and the operation is defined as follows. If U and V are distinct, then U star V to be the this vertex, the second vertex on the shortest path. And if U, and U, U equal to V, then just U star V to be U. Okay, this is the definition. So, oh, I'm sorry. So here's an example. Uh, this is a block graph, so this is a geodetic graph. And then, the proper groupoid of this graph is, uh, how to say, is like this. So. How to obtain this operation table? Just check the shortest path between two distinct vertices. So, for example, uh, for example, A star F is defined to be the second vertex of the sh unique shortest path from A to F. So, in this case, that is B. So we we write here B, and we can write in this way all the entries. Oh, sorry, and the important thing is uh, we can check that this proper groupoid of a geodetic graph satisfies two axioms of tra travel groupoids. So this proper group, uh, this kind of proper groupoid is always a travel groupoid. Okay, now I want to say some properties coming from just the definition of travel groupoid. So the first property is uh, travel groupoid is idempotent. So that means for any element v, v star v is equal to v. Uh, this is easy to check from the action. So, so by using t1, if we put u to be the same element v, then we obtain v star v, star v is equal to v. And then we multiply the element v from the right, then we obtain v star v, star v, star v is equal to v star v. Now we, we apply the axiom 2, then so we see u to be v star v, then we obtain v star v equal to v. So we obtain this property. And more properties. So for any two elements, u and v, we have the following three three properties. So first one is u star v is equal to v if and only if v star u is equal to u. And the second one is u star v is equal to u if and only if u equal v. And the third one is u star u star v is equal to u star v. So this is also just check by using actions. So from from left to right First, we use the axiom one. Then uh, this is just axiom one, and so by using the assumption u star v is equal to v, so we put just here v, so we obtain the right hand side, and the other converse direction is the same way. And the second property is, is coming from so we first multiply st uh, the element v from the right, then we obtain this equation. And by the assumption, u star v is equal to u, so we obtain u star v star v is equal to u. So now we apply the axiom 2, then we obtain u star v. And the converse side is from this property. Okay, now the third one. Third one is 
first we use action one, then applying this first property, then we can put u star b to be b, uh, sorry, by using the first one, then we obtain this one. So how to say, change, change the two elements. So, okay, this kind of property we can say from the two axioms. Okay, now I want to talk about the relationship, uh, how to say, some definition, which is the relationship between travel groupoids and graphs. So, for travel groupoid and a graph, we say that G has a travel groupoid V star, or we say that V star has, is on the graph G if the set V is equal to the vertex set of G, and the edge set of G is equal to the following set. This is the set of UV, where UV are distinct element in the set V and satisfies the equation U star V equal to V. Okay, oh, sorry. Now, here's an example again. We already checked this three times as, how to say, this group point of size three is a travel group point. And this travel group point is on this graph, a path of three vertices. So because A star B is equal to B and B star C is equal to C, we can check from this operation table. So we have an edge between A and B and B and C. So a travel groupoid is always on exactly one graph. But a graph have, may, may have many travel groupoid. Okay, now a fundamental question is the following. Which graphs have travel groupoids? Um, this is already known by Nevesky for finite graphs. So let G be a finite graph, then G has a travel groupoid if and only if either G is connected or G is disconnected but no component, no connected, no comp connected component is a tree. So this is <coughs> a characterization for finite graphs to have travel group points. Okay, now we want to consider how about infinite graphs. And, and there is a question by Nevesky. So Nevesky left a pro question, does there exist an infinite graph G with no finite components, such as G has no travel group points. So the first, re first result of, first, first our result is, is the answer of this question. And the answer is yes. So we can, we can make an example, example for this question. So let G be the disjoint union of two infinite stars. Then we can check G, of course, G has no finite component. Each component has infinitely many vertices. And we can say that G has no travel group void. So, okay, let's check the, this part. G ha, this graph has no travel group void. Mm, to say, uh, to check the property, we, we first mentioned something. Uh, an infinite star means one vertex, central vertex, and with infinitely many degree one vertex. So defined by this set, vertex set and edge set. And I want to mention one thing. Uh, if a travel groupoid is on G, then U star V is always in the neighborhood of the vertex U. So U star V is in its adjacent to U. This is just coming from the definition of uh, TG, uh, travel group point is on G. Okay, now we can say the following. Red G V is a disjoint union of an infinite star and one more graph H. Here H is an infinite connected graph. So we can 
of course, take h as an infinite star. Then we can show that g has no travel groupoids. So we can show this is not so difficult, just, just checking some properties. So suppose there exists a travel groupoid on this, on this graph, then take any vertex from here. Then, of course, w, uh, the vertex w is not equal to the center vertex of the infinite star. So then by using previous remarks, so that means v, v0 star w is in the neighborhood of v0. So this neighborhood is, of course, vj's. So let's let put vj to be the v0 star w. Then, of course, w is in here. So vj, v sub j is not equal to w. So then we can again use the remark in the previous page. So vj star w is in the neighborhood of vj. This is just only one vertex, v0. So we obtain this equation. Now we use these two, uh, these two equation. Then we obtain v0 star w star w is equal to my vj, uh, equal to v0. But we have w equal not to v0. So this groupoid does not satisfy action T2. So if it is a contradiction, so we can say this graph has no travel groupoid. So this is just an example, but we can say more, which is characteri which characterize graphs which is which may infinite to be to have travel groupoid. So let's give you a finite or infinite graph. Then G has a travel groupoid if and only if G is connected or G is disconnected and no connected component is a tree with finite diameter. This is a different, different point for infinite graph. In finite case, always tree has finite diameter, so this condition was not appear in the characterization by Nebesky, but in infinite case, we need this kind of property. Okay, this is characterization. Now I want to mm, talk up, consider fi finite graphs. So we want to count how many travel groupoids on a given finite graphs. And to count such a structure, first we focus on finite connected, connected case, connected graphs. So if G is a finite connected graph, then by theorem of Nebesky, G always has at least one travel group point. Now, the problem is for a given finite connected graph G, how many travel group points does G have? I want to, uh, we want to count this structure on G. Uh, here is one known result by Nevesky. So every finite tree has exactly one travel group point. In this case, already the number was known. So, but we want to consider general finite connected graph G. Okay, here is an example for travel group points on C5. C5 is just a cycle of length five. So C5 is of course, a geodetic graph, so we can define the proper groupoid uniquely. So proper groupoid of C5 is obtained by this one, by using a unique shortest path between two distinct vertices. And so well, we can check any from the graph. But there are another travel groupoid on C5. So this is not the proper groupoid, but satisfying the two axioms in the definition of travel groupoid. So their graph, graphs may have different travel groupoids. And indeed, in this case, there exist 243 travel groupoids on C5. So the problem is, I want to count this kind of number. 
And to count this kind of thing, first we add one more condition for travel groupoid called non-confusing. First we count non-confusing travel groupoid. Okay, so one more definition. So let V star be a travel groupoid. Then uh, we write down U star I I B to be the how to say U star V star V star V star V uh, multiply I times the element B from the right. So just just for abbreviation for this this kind of element. So we denote by this way, and uh, this is just a remark. So U star one V is just U star V, which is not equal to U. And U star 2V is always not equal to the element U. This is by from the axioms. And now we define confusing pair. A pair, a distinct element, uh, a pair of distinct element U and V is called a confusing pair if they exist integer i at least 3 such that u star i v is equal to u. So i equal 1 and 2 then always this is not equal to u but if i is at least 3 then u star i v may sometime equal to u. So we call such a pair a confusing pair. Uh, here is an example so mm, so red travel groupoid to be this groupoid this is indeed travel groupoid and then we can also check the, this graph has this travel groupoid and in this case we can check that the pair a and e is a confusing pair in this travel groupoid um, just to check the a star a star 3e is equal to a so a star e is equal to c so a, we, we want to check a star e star e star e is equal to a so a star e is equal to c and then c star e is equal to b and b star e is equal to a again the element a so this pair is a confusing pair in this travel group point Okay, now we call a travel groupoid non-confusing if there is no confusing pair. And here is, an, here is a characterization of non-confusing finite travel groupoid. So this is also by Nevesky. So a finite travel groupoid on a graph G is non-confusing if and only if the following sequence is a pass in G. So this sequence is for any two distinct vertices U and V. This sequence is U from U and U star V and U star V star V and so on. So U star KV. This sequence is a pass from U to V in G. So this is a characterization in terms of graphs. So uh, we will use this result in our main theorem. Okay, now I want to say m one more thing. For every finite connected graph G, there exists at least one non-confusing travel groupoid on G. So we know at least one, but we we didn't know how many. Okay, now first we want to count how many non-confusing travel groupoid on a given finite connected graph. This is a problem. So to give the number, the number of non-confusing travel groupoid, we define one combinatorial object coming from graphs. So for a vertex V in a graph G, mm, a, a V3 of G 
is the spanning tree of G, which contains all the edges incident to the vertex B. So for example, for this graph, these colored edges form the spanning tree, and, and this spanning tree contains these three edges, which are incident to the vertex B. So this is a V3. Now we denote by S sub G of V to be the set of V3s of G. Okay, now here is one result. So let G be a finite, gra finite connected graph with n vertices. Then there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set. Here, this is the direct product of the set of V trees for each vertice and the set of non all non-confusing travel group points on G. And from this correspondence, the number of non-confusing travel group points on G is equal to the, how to say, product of the number of V3 in the graph G for each vertice. So, okay, here is an example again. So, how, how to count, uh, what, uh, this example shows what is this number for C5. So, take a vertex A, then, we have three A trees of C5. So A trees means these two edges must contain in a spanning tree. So we we can <laughs> there are three A trees, A trees. And by symmetry, uh, for for each five vert, any of five vertices, vertices, the number is equal to three. Oh, sorry. So we can count the non-confusing travel group point of C5 by just, just, just take the product of this number. So three to, five, three to the power five, so which is the number 243. And of course, more generally, we can say the number of non-confusing travel group point of cycle Cn it to be this number. Okay, now I want to explain the one-to-one -one correspondence between the direct product of the set of V trees and the set of all non-confusing travel group point on the graph G. So first we take a sequence of V trees from, uh, for each vertex, then, then this is a spanning tree, and this a tree is a geodetic graph, so we can define this kind of element, similarly as proper group point for geodetic graphs. So we define we define the operation by this way. So if u and v are distinct elements, so u star v to be the Second, second vertex from, how to say, on the shortest path from U to V in the tree T of V. So we consider for each, for each V tree, we, we can define the VI row, a uh, VI column from this structure, this structure, and we define, so each operation table by by considering these V trees. Then we can check this is indeed travel group point, and furthermore, this is indeed non-confusing. So from this to this gives this correspondence. And the converse is also similarly defined by similar way. So we have non-confusing travel group point, so we have a table, then we define V3 by this set. So we fix a vertex V, then we define the edge set of the V3 by the set of pairs U and U star V. 
then we can check indeed this is the spanning tree of the graph G and this tree contains all the edges incident to V. So this will be V3 and for each vertex. So this gives the correspondence and this is indeed one to one. Okay, now we go back to the original problem. The original problem was given a finite graph which may not connect it on, which, uh, which may be disconnected and how many, we want to consider how many travel group points does G have, which may have confusing pairs. Okay, and the idea is, the idea of the counting is in a similar way, but the object, combinatorial object is different from the previous one, V3. So now we consider so-called V, v near, tree, near forest. So this is the definition. So for a vertex V of G, a V near forest of G is a spanning subgraph, just a spanning subgraph of G, sat satisfying this, this two. So the connected components of, uh, sorry, uh, this subgraph F, not con which not contain not containing the vertex V, are uh, uniscrete graph. So graph containing exactly one cycle. And the connected component of the subgraph F and containing V is a tree which contains the, all the edges incident to V. So for example, uh, for this graph, this is a V, tree, v near forest. So, so the connected components of F, which is not containing V, so here is two connected components which does not contain V. So this has exactly one cycle, so unicyclic graph. And G connected component containing V is a tree, and these three edges in this compo component. So this is a V near forest. Now we denote by the set of V near forests of G by F sub G of V. Okay, now this is the main result of this talk. So let G be a finite graph with n vertices. Then the number of travel group points on G is equal to this number. So this number is, so first consider 2 to the power C of F minus 1. So C of F means the number of components of F. So where F runs V near forest. So take a sum, then we run the product for vertices. So we need this kind of set to count travel group points. Okay. okay, let's see an example again. So now we take this graph. So well, this is also a block graph, but anyway, w for, this, for this graph, we count travel group point and non-confusing travel group point. So given by this kind of number, So for this kind of two vertices, we have three V near forest. Indeed, these are V trees. So this term gives three. So just two to the power zero. So this is one plus one plus one. So just equal to three. And these four vertices, the term of this one is equal to five. So, so here are just, uh, this example is very small. So the number of connected components is just equal to one. So one minus one gives just two to the power zero, it's just equal to one. But this, this linear forest gives 
two connected components, so two to the power two minus one, so which gives two for this term. And uh, this is, of course, Brunia tree, but uh, Brunia forest, but this is not a Brunia tree. Okay, now the number is like this. So for these two two vertices, this term and this term is the same to three and three, and uh, the other four vertices gives this term as five. But but V three, there are three V trees for these four vertices. So the number for four vertices are just three. So this makes the difference of the number of travel group points and non-confusing travel group points like this. And the idea of proof is in a similar way, but a little bit different. So, so for a tree component, oh, sorry, tree component, we can consider the unique way to. So tree is a tree is a geodetic graph. So we can con we can define star operation a uh, star operation in the similar way. So this is just as before, but for unique component, how to say, we can define two ways, two ways for element star B. So this is, this is coming from the orientation of the cycle in the unique component. So this gives the two kinds of operations. Therefore, we, we can count this kind of structure for this number, of, of this number. Okay, now here is a conclusion. First, we gave a characterization, and then we consider the number of travel group points on a given finite graph G, and which are given by using the structure uh, counting the V trees of G and V near forests of G. So this is how to say. Uh, so this kind of this kind of algebraic structure was counted by by counting combinatorial structure on G. So this is the main result of this talk. And finally, I will mention. Oh, sorry. Finally, I mean. I will mention some future work. So, Nevesky introduced more axioms. So, travel group point to be to be simple or smooth or semi-smooth by by adding on more axioms, more axioms for travel group points, and this forms a subclass of travel group points. So in this talk, we count travel group points and non-confusing travel group points. But we, so, but we don't know what is the number of travel group points which are simple or semi-smooth or smooth. So this is, this is future work. So, uh, in this direction. Okay, now I will finish my talk. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>